In today's video, I'm going to be discussing some news on the banks cracking down on cryptocurrency once again, as well as a couple of positive articles in the way of mainstream adoption. Hey guys and welcome to today's video. So today's video guys is going to be a little bit of a news update on what's happening in the cryptocurrency space in terms of banks, regulations and some mainstream adoption articles as well. Now you guys may have remembered my video from a little while back. I believe I titled it, Is Bitcoin Legal in Australia? Now in that video I discussed a friend of mine that had their account frozen for purchasing cryptocurrency. Um, I'm going to expand on that, talk about the big four banks in Australia and basically what's happening now and where they stand on cryptocurrencies. So we'll get right into it guys. This is a fairly recent article here, only about six or seven days ago from the Commonwealth Bank and essentially they've banned credit card payments of virtual currencies or cryptocurrencies. Now as far as I know, debit card payments are still okay but they have banned credit card payments completely and they've basically said they've made this decision because virtual currencies like Bitcoin and others do not meet a minimum standard of regulation, reliability and reputation when compared to your generic fiat currencies. So they give a pretty good rundown on everything there. Personally, I don't really have a big problem with this one due to the fact that realistically you probably shouldn't be buying cryptocurrencies with a credit card anyway because that could be seen as pretty much taking a loan out to buy cryptocurrency which as we all know is a volatile and speculative investment which can either produce good gains or bad losses as well so you should never take out a loan or do anything like that just to purchase a form of cryptocurrency um, anyhow it is good to see that debit cards are still available there and payments can still be made but that is something to look out for guys and as long as they keep debit card purchases open that will be good to see uh, there's a few things that banks I've noticed lately are doing as well, uh, which may be subtle changes linked to basically scaring away people from cryptocurrency or trying to stop people from going down that route. Um, I see these sort of ads on every single night on television and I'm seeing them circle the internet as well quite frequently. So banks are basically trying to work on their own technology, increasing payments, dropping fees, all that sort of thing. And personally, to me, that is just straight up combating the effects of cryptocurrency. Now, a lot of people might just see this as a technology advancement, but in my opinion, the banks are scared of cryptocurrency and they know that the time is only inevitable until the crypto takeover. So Commonwealth has recently brought out this pay ID which allows faster payments between participating banks using your pay ID. Um, so there's a bit more info on it that you guys can check out, but it's fast, easy, available through mobile, secure, and simple to register. Personally, I haven't used it, so I don't know too many details there. Now, I found this recent article as well from Australian ABC News, and basically the big four banks, Commonwealth, NAB, Westpac, and ANZ, have decided to drop their fees. Now, this is another thing straight away that says to me they're trying to keep up with crypto and, if anything, make themselves a better alternative to cryptocurrency um, and just try to take their business back, essentially. So, Commonwealth Bank was the first to abolish the $2 fee for each withdrawal from an ATM by non-customers. Westpac quickly followed suit, emphasising the benefits afforded to those in regional and rural Australia. ANZ then announced it would dump the ATM fees from October last year and NAB finally announced their move for the drop of fees, calling it a good decision and a good outcome for customers. So in terms of actions from the banks, that's basically what we have now. Personally, my opinion on this is no matter how good they develop their technology, your money is still in someone else's hands, and the true anarchists out there will ultimately still rather their money in an investment like cryptocurrency where you have full control over your funds at all times. So now we'll move on to this next article here. Now, Westpac, ANZ and NAB aren't particularly cracking down on Bitcoin and other cryptos. So basically ANZ have told ABC that they do not want to prohibit customers buying digital or cryptocurrencies or accepting them as a form of payment. However, they will be monitoring transactions for unusual behavior to protect against fraud and unregulatory businesses. So NAB have also said that they may not allow certain cryptocurrency transactions in the future if security concerns continue to arise 
and ASIC have also advised that most virtual currency exchange platforms are generally not regulated and customers may not be protected for any legal recourse if that platform fails or hacked. And most of us should know that guys, KYC and all that sort of thing isn't always implemented in these exchanges. Holding your money on any exchange is a risk and it's always good to have your money and have your funds stored in a wallet whenever you can do so. Um, in terms of Westpac and CBA, Westpac have basically said that they've currently got no restrictions on credit card to purchase cryptocurrency. However, they wouldn't comment on the bank's future plans for a potential ban. Commonwealth Bank were contacted but have not yet responded and obviously that first article that I put out there, the banning of the virtual currency purchases via credit card basically follows that up. But like I said, debit card purchases are still authorised. However, if you guys did follow that video from way back, I will link that if I haven't linked that yet. So make sure to go and check that out as well because that person, I believe, was with Commonwealth and they tried to do a regular purchase, had a few problems, rang up the company and they basically, as soon as they mentioned cryptocurrency, they froze their account. So I always recommend you guys to not mention anything to do with crypto if you are in contact with your bank. It's not illegal to purchase cryptocurrency, but it's just best to not mention it. One other thing here I find quite funny is Lloyds Bank are concerned that its customers may buy Bitcoin and other digital currencies to make profits when they rise, but face significant debts when they fall. The bank is concerned that they could ultimately bear the liability of any unpaid debts should the cryptocurrency market continue to fall. Now, personally, that's just ridiculous in my eyes. They have no liability on what you do with your own money. And if anything, they're just trying to keep your money in their possession and avoid you spending it on these different things. Everyone uses their money for everything on a day-to-day -day basis and they're never worried about that. So why should they be worried about this in my opinion? But that's basically it in terms of the banks and what they're doing. So if you are in Australia, this should be quite relevant to you. Obviously, if you're overseas, you may be working throughout a different bank. So it is good to stay up to date with what your bank is doing regarding cryptocurrencies and what their plans are in the future as well. Now, a couple of awesome articles I just wanted to follow up at the end of this video, guys. First one here, a PayPal executive. So the CFO, John Rainey, has spoke positively of Bitcoin's future on the interview with the Wall Street Journal and basically said that PayPal was one of the first companies to accept Bitcoin on their Braintree platform. But given the volatility of Bitcoin right now, it's not a reliable currency for stable transactions on a day-to-day -day basis. And in response to the question of will cryptocurrencies ever be a popular form of payments, Rainey suggests that the likelihood of this happening is very, very high. So the technology is there to merit it. However, he suspects that this would be years down the road before it is used on a daily basis. Coinbase, a cryptocurrency wallet and exchange platform, one of the largest exchanges in the world, as you guys probably already know, have added former PayPal executive David Marcus to its board of directors as well. So that's something to consider, guys. I would like to see PayPal and cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase start to work hand in hand, and that will help facilitate online payments in the future. The last one here is Boost Juice, guys. Quite an interesting one here. I was not expecting Boost to get on board. Um, I'm a big fan of Boost Juice, guys. Not really a plug or anything there, just a personal preference. But they are doing this awesome competition, which is good to see. Boost have quite a large audience, and they're definitely reaching out to a lot of people that aren't really aware of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So it's awesome exposure to see, but basically they're giving away four different Bitcoins that you can have a chance to win. So simply buy any boost and play to win using the Boost Juice app. And essentially, I think what you have to do is guess the value of the coin and the closest person to guess has the chance to win a Bitcoin. So that's basically it, guys, in terms of this video. I hope this little news update has helped you guys. If you do find anything else that is interesting regarding these big four banks and cryptocurrency regulations, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on everything as well. But until then, guys, I'll see you in the next video. I'm in love with the cocoa.